water column of a lake or pond or even large river or bring to the surface a collection of numerous small animals called the zooplankton. Here at Lake Tahoe, California, Nevada, the zooplankton samples are dominated by two species of copepods. Zooplankton are especially important as the trophic link between phytoplankton and fish. The zooplankton are more formally defined as the feeding heterotrophic component of the plankton, and they are taxonomically diverse. The main groups are heterotrophic protists, rotifers, and two groups of crustaceans, cladocerans and copepods. But many other groups can also be present, including ostracods, insect larvae, mollusk larvae, amphipods, and different types of shrimp species. The heterotrophic protists are single cells or colonies of cells and contain the smallest taxa, including flagellates, ciliates, and heliozoans. Rotifers are morphologically diverse, but they usually have a well-defined head, trunk, and foot. They also have a corona of cilia, which allows the animals to swim, as well as collect food particles. Cladocerans are usually characterized by a conspicuous head, light-sensitive organs, swimming antennae, and a bivalve carapace that encloses the body. Their eggs are carried within the body in a brood pouch. In fresh waters, most planktonic copepods are members of the Calanoida and Cyclopoida. Their bodies are highly segmented and have conspicuous antennae, swimming, and feeding appendages. Their eggs are carried externally in a pair of egg sacs. The zooplankton collectively use several mechanisms to capture their food, including direct interception of food particles, generation of feeding currents, filter feeding, scraping food from surfaces, and individually seizing their prey. Many species are omnivorous, but also show a degree of feeding selectivity based upon body size, prey morphology, swimming behavior, prey toxicity, and taste. Food consumption can be quantified by clearance rates, that is the volume of water processed by the community or animal per unit time, and ingestion rates, the quantity of food ingested by the community or animal. Ingestion rates for individual zooplankton vary with body size, prey type, food concentration, and water temperature. Community ingestion rates vary over space and time, and with community composition. As shown here in Lake Constance, where ciliates play a major role but rotifers and aphnia become increasingly important later in the season, with large differences between years. The reproductive strategies differ among zooplankton groups. For heterotrophic protists, reproduction may occur through mitotic or meiotic cell division. For rotifers and cladocerans, reproduction can alternate between sexual and asexual phases, as shown here. Sexual reproduction in cladocerans may be triggered by environmental stresses, and it results in thick-walled resting eggs called ephippia that overwinter in lake sediments. For all groups, survival and population growth rates are strongly affected by water temperature and by the quantity and quality of available food resources. Zooplankton community composition and diversity change over time. This is in response to variations in the physical and chemical environment and biotic factors such as food resource availability and predation. These dynamics are especially well studied and modeled for temperate lakes, but they are less understood in tropical and polar regions.
The spatial distribution of zooplankton within lakes is heterogeneous in both the vertical and horizontal dimensions. These patterns can change over time, and the underlying drivers are scale dependent, including physical processes, gradients in the chemical environment, and patchiness in food resources and impacts of predators. One of the many interesting facets of zooplankton ecology is the swimming behavior of these animals over the 24-hour cycle. Many species remain deep in the water column during the day, and then swim upwards towards the surface during the night, with large differences in migration patterns among species. Here in Lake Constance, for example, one species of Daphnia migrates up and down by 30 meters each day, while the second species shows little change in its distribution over the 24-hour cycle. This migration away from the surface during the day may allow some zooplankton species to avoid being captured by visual predators. But other factors may also play a role, such as slower metabolic losses in cold deep water and the avoidance of UV radiation at the surface. Dr. Stephen Thackeray is a lake ecologist at the UK Centre for Ecology and Hydrology. He has a special interest in zooplankton and their spatial dynamics and is involved in lake monitoring programs. The daily vertical migration of zooplankton certainly complicates their accurate monitoring. This is because the animals may be well below the surface at the time of sampling. Two of the questions of our research have been, how fast do zooplankton swim and what affects that swimming speed? In this study, we used acoustic Doppler current profiling to assess the swimming speed of zooplankton in a small, stratified artificial lake. Our acoustic data showed that the zooplankton could have mean upward swimming speeds at night of around 9 metres per hour. This upward swimming speed increased at higher water temperatures above the thermocline and was not related to food concentrations. Combining the results of a new model with our observations indicated that the cladocerans return to deeper waters during the day by passive sinking. This may allow the animals to save energy by reducing their swimming costs over the 24 hour cycle. It may also reduce their disturbance of the water which may attract predators. Zooplankton diversity and community structure vary among water bodies. This is related to physical differences such as climate or flushing rates, chemical differences such as pH and calcium, and biological differences in productivity and predation. Environmental change has wide-ranging impacts on zooplankton communities. Eutrophication, with effects on community structure and food web relationships. Environmental contaminants, which may affect life history and population size. And climate change, causing shifts in seasonality decade-scale changes and responses to extreme weather events.